Hey everybody, it's Samantha. I'm hanging out here on my bed in my pajamas because I've been in them for a very long time and I'll get to why, I guess, later into this video. So first of all, I kind of put off filming this video. First because I couldn't really get out of bed much and second because I didn't want to read the comments. Um, there are a lot of people on my channel who actually like follow me and they want bad things for me. It's like they are just sitting around waiting for me to get cancer again for something bad to happen to me so they can be like, see, you did something wrong, you ate sugar, you had a baby, blah 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 blah. They're just waiting around for that to happen and I felt like I could not read those comments. Now I'm definitely in a better place because I know there's going to be tons of really nice and supporting comments on this video and I know I can also just disable comments altogether but I want the nice people to be able to comment because I know you guys have followed me for a very long time and I know you guys want to and I'm just going to deal with all the mean comments and I'll, I'll be able to just laugh them off like I normally do but when I first found out about this I definitely was not feeling like reading all of those so that's why I kind of put off making this video and pushing it out for everyone to see. So obviously you read the title, clicked on the video. I found out my cancer is back. Normally when I make videos I have an outline plan of what I'm going to say and for this video I have no plan at all which usually means it's going to be really hard editing this video because I'm going to be all over the place with my thoughts but I just thought I would sit down and make this because I'm sitting right now and right now I'm fine sitting and I don't know how long I'm going to be able to sit without pain so we're just going to make it now. So to start at the beginning in April sometime I started having a lot of back pain. And at first it just felt like I threw up my back. There was one day where I told Gray, you need to stay home because I don't feel like I can pick up the baby and I don't feel like I can care for her very well Like when my back's like this because I don't want to pick her up and risk dropping her or stuff like that. So he stayed at home from work and it kind of just felt like, you know, I threw my back out. It happens to everyone every once in a while. And, you know, a couple of days go by, my back gets better. I'm able to stay home with the baby myself. And then it just kind of hurt but it wasn't like so bad that I couldn't do everything. So I just kept going on with my life. And sometimes the back pain would get really painful and sometimes it wouldn't be painful. I kept going like that until the end of May. We went on a trip to Barrow, Alaska and we filmed it all and made a vlog about it and I haven't even gotten around to editing it yet. It was like Memorial Day weekend and when we were up there, the roads were all really bumpy because they weren't really well maintained. It's the northernmost city in the United States, like northernmost city in Alaska, if you guys don't know. And it was very snowy and the roads had lots of potholes and there was ice everywhere and stuff. So the road was really bumpy and it was really hard on my back when I was up there, like riding in a car or a bus. And so when we got back from that trip, my back kind of just hurt a lot. But it was still manageable. I was still able to pick the baby up off the ground if I did certain things. I had to like hold her really close to my body and kind of do like a lunge. And I, I had all this stuff figured out because my back had been hurting for so long that I just found new ways to do things. So then we were planning on going on a trip to the beach with Gray's family in June, the first week of June. So we kind of got back from our Barrow trip and we had like a few days at home and we were getting ready to go on another trip. And United had canceled our flight. So I was on the phone with United trying to figure out, you know, how we were going to get there still and get on a different flight and get all of our seats together because they had put us all in middle seats scattered around the plane. And I, my baby can't sit in a middle seat by herself, obviously. Um, so I had to, I was on the phone with them. In the middle of the call, my baby started crying. So I went to go pick her up off the floor and I just had this horrible intense pain in my back and I was just I was on the phone with United going ow 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 this hurts and the guy was just like are you okay and I just felt so bad for him because he didn't know what was going on and finally like I was able to talk again and I was like okay sorry I just like hurt my back and Gray actually had walked in the door at the same time and he was like what's going on like do we need to take you to the ER and I was like I probably would go in any other situation, but since we're trying to get on this flight, like we found out we could get on a flight earlier, so we were up, we were going to need to leave for the airport in a couple hours. I was like, 
no, let's just go get on the flight because I don't want to mess this up for everybody. Um, we'll just go get on the flight. So we got on the flight and I was in so much pain. Um, whenever I would go to sit down or stand up, I would get these shock like pains that would go up my back. And I'm telling you like, if labor is a 10 on the pain scale, this was a nine and it was, it hurt so bad. And I, I like, I can't even explain it. And so whenever we would get on the plane, I would take, I would have to take a while to sit down to try to like make it so it wouldn't hurt, but it still always would. And then when I was getting off the plane, we let everybody else get off first because it would take me so long to stand up. And all the flight attendants were like, do you need help? And it was like, I didn't even know how to have them help me because it was just so painful and I didn't want anyone to touch me because it hurt so bad and I didn't want anyone to accidentally make something happen. Then we got to the beach and you know, everyone was like, oh, I'm so sorry your back hurts. The thing that triggered in my mind that this was unusual was that everyone came up to me at the beach, every single person in Gray's like family, we were with like his grandparents and his cousins. Almost every single one of them came up to me and told me, hey, I've had this happen to me before. It's really bad. And I was just like, there is absolutely no way. I do not believe that everyone here has had this level of pain. I believe that everyone has thrown their back out before and had that pain in April, but I do not believe that everyone has had this level of pain. There's no way that people just walk around like this all day and it's normal. And so I was feeling like, wow, either I am a complete wimp and this pain is not as bad as I think it is, which nine out of 10 pain is how I would describe it. Or these people don't know what I'm talking about and they like, the, I, I'm not explaining my back pain well enough. By the end of the week at the beach, my back was feeling a lot better. <laughs> um, I was still having the shooting pain, but it was maybe like seven out of 10 instead of nine. And so then we would go, we went to my family's house and they saw me in this pain and they were kind of just like, oh my gosh, you are in a ton of pain. I'm going to get a doctor's appointment as soon as we get back. So we flew back to Alaska. Again, the plane was a struggle, but it wasn't as bad as the first time at least. I go into the doctor and he says, maybe we should get an MRI. This sounds like it could be like a nerve thing but let's just get an x-ray first because sometimes insurance denies an MRI unless you get an x-ray first. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll go get an x-ray. And he was like, and while we're at it, I'm gonna prescribe some steroids to try to help this. And so I was like, okay. So I took like five steroids over five days or something like that, or maybe it was 10, like it might've been twice a day, I don't know. So I took a course of steroids and I got this x-ray. The x-ray showed nothing wrong at all. And he was like, this is really good at showing nothing at all. And I said, and he was like, so the next step would be to either send you into physical therapy or to get an MRI. And I was like, kind of in my mind, I was like, I don't really want to pay for an MRI. And I was like, look, the main thing that I'm worried about here is spine metastasis. Like, do you think it could be that? And he was like, well, we could see a little bit of that on the x-ray and there's nothing going on with your bones in the x-ray. So it's probably not that. He was like, the MRI would probably show us other things. And I was just like, yeah, but last time when I had the Mets on my rib, we only found it by MRI. And he was like, oh yeah, then maybe we should get an MRI. And I was like, you know what? Let me just try the physical therapy first, see if it helps. And then we'll come back to the MRI because my back was starting to feel better after the steroids. Everything like started clearing up. Into July, it got better. I was feeling good and my back was still hurting. There were still things that I couldn't do. Like I still couldn't like do a crunch off or a sit up off the floor. And so there were still random things that I couldn't do, but like I was able to get around. And like I said, I knew all the tricks and ways to bend down and pick stuff up and pick up the baby and all of that. So I had like my routine down and everything. Hey, it's me editing here. Uh, I forgot to mention, I was doing all of these stretches that the doctor had given me because he thought that the problem was my SI joint because that's where I was feeling tons of pain. And so he gave me all these stretch stretches to help that and I was doing those at home. I never actually went to physical therapy because I didn't call them right away because we were going on another trip back home because in July Gray um, had to take the bar exam so I didn't, I didn't go and do physical therapy. 
when they suggested and then when we got back from that trip I was just feeling so much better so I was just like you know what I don't think I need to go to physical therapy I'll just keep doing these exercises at home plus I've got a baby and I don't really have time to go to physical therapy twice a week so um yeah that's what was going on during that time period I just thought that everything was getting better we got into August and my back started doing bad again and I'm not really sure why or what triggered it but the week leading up to it, I knew my back was hurting a lot and I did a lot of holding my baby and standing up and we drove in the car a few times and I probably just overdid it. I probably just pushed myself a little bit too far during that week, but we were planning on taking family pictures on August 12th and I was so excited to have these pictures because I wanted to have family pictures before we moved out of Alaska. If you guys didn't know, which I don't think you did because I don't think we've announced it, we are moving back to Virginia in September and that was always the plan because Greg got a new job there. So I wanted these family pictures in Alaska before we moved out and I was so excited for these and so I was just resting on Friday night and all of Saturday before the pictures because I wanted my back to be feeling okay enough to be able to hold the baby in the pictures and to be able to just even do the pictures like standing up because I was just having so much pain like even just sitting down at dinner like sometimes Gray would just put my dinner on the floor and I would eat it like on my stomach because it hurt so bad to just sit. Sitting was the worst thing ever. So so on August 12th, we finally get to the time we're gonna take pictures. It was like at six o'clock. We drove up this mountain. When we got up the mountain, I got out of the car to wait for the photographer. I was like, I need to start standing up now because my back hurts and I need to get it used to standing. And I was having so much trouble walking, like way more trouble than before walking. I felt like completely unstable and I was like holding onto the car and I was taking these really, really small steps. And I told Gray, I was like, I can't walk. And he was just like, okay, so do you wanna to go to urgent care or the ER after this? And I was like, I guess we'll go to urgent care after this. Like, I guess it's a good idea because I have never, I haven't ever been in this amount of pain where I can't like walk. And so the photographer gets there and I explain the situation. I say, hey, I'm like really hurting. And she was like, okay, well, we'll try to do like easy things. We'll try to go easy places and Greg can hold the baby and we can try to sit you down and, and whatever. And so we go through like 20 minutes of taking pictures and the baby starts getting upset. She started crying. And so we were like, okay, we probably can't keep doing the pictures anymore. And at this point I was sitting on the ground on a rock and I needed help getting up. So Gray helped me get up and I stood up and then Gray was like, I'm gonna go put the baby in the car so she can get warm and I'll come back and help you get down this hill because we were like on a hill on the mountain. The photographer and I just started walking back by ourselves and I was taking these very very little steps and then all of a sudden my back just hurt so bad and I held on to the photographer and was like holding on to her shoulders and I just yelled for Gray. I was like Gray come back now come back now and I was like asking the photographer do you see him yet like she was like no I don't see him I don't know where he is and I was just like I hope he's not trying to buckle her into her car seat he just needs to throw her in the car so he can come get me it's not that far like we'll be right there we can see the car and she just kept saying she didn't see him and I was holding on so hard just waiting for him to come because I knew he could support my weight and I didn't want to put all my weight on the photographer because she was she was smaller than me. And finally, I just collapsed to the ground because I was like, I can't, I can't hold on any longer. I can't wait for him. And she was like, okay, I'm going to go get your husband. So Greg came back and he was like, I'm so sorry. The baby was screaming. I didn't want to leave her. And I couldn't really hear you very well, but I could hear you calling my name. And I was just like, I needed you to come. Like, you need to come. And, and he's like, okay, I'm going to help you get up. So he gave the baby to the photographer and the photographer was happy to hold the baby because she, she's like a newborn photographer too so she loves babies and he helped me get off the ground and so I got off the ground and he was kind of like I was kind of like hanging on him and he was kind of pulling me I was kind of using my feet and we were going down the mountain then he tripped a little bit and when he tripped like he was still standing but it hurt me so bad we, we were going really slow and then all of a sudden there was like this you know, drop because he tripped and then it hurt my back so bad I was back on the ground. And at that point I was like, I don't think I can get up. I told him to call an ambulance to get them to get me in a stretcher because I didn't think I was gonna be able to sit in the car. 
and he was just like look we're way up on this mountain it's gonna take so long for the ambulance to come so there were all these people around and they were trying to ask us how they could help and Gray had one of them pull the car around so that it was even closer to where we were people kept asking us if we needed help carrying me and I just kept being like no I don't want people to touch me like it hurts so bad like I was in so much pain and so finally I was just like look maybe if we get a ton of people and they can keep me really really straight like don't bend my back at all then I can get into the car so there was these group of five guys that came and they helped carry me to the car so that I was very straight and it hurt initially when they picked me up but they did a very good job and then when I got into the car I was like still in a ton of pain and I kept telling this guy that there was this one random guy who he was like what do you need because Gray was buckling the baby into her car seat and he was like what do you need I was like can you just and he was just like what and I like couldn't get the sentence out because I was in that much pain and finally I was like recline the seat recline the seat he's like yes, yes okay sorry about that um yeah he was just like yes I can recline the seat and then we started going down the mountain and this mountain very bumpy right because some of the roads are not like paved and they have potholes and Gray's just driving as slowly as he can I'm just in I can't even tell you so much pain sitting in this car seat it, it is it was reclined but it hurts so bad we finally get to the ER. It took us like 45 minutes to get there. They bring out a wheelchair and I was just like, I don't even know if I can get into a wheelchair. And they were like, well, you gotta get into a wheelchair. Like, this is what you have to do. And I was like, okay. And so Gray helped me get out of the car and I hung on him for a little bit. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best feeling in the world. Like I wrapped my arms around his shoulders and I just let my body fall. And I was like, I just need to sit like this for a minute. And so I sat like that for a minute and then got in the car, uh, got in the wheelchair. We got into the ER and you know they gave me these these pain meds and they worked a little bit but still it hurt so bad and the entire time I'm just thinking about my baby because she's crying because she's cold and she was hungry I was gonna feed her when we got back in the car but obviously that didn't happen and so all these people in the ER are trying to help like the doctor and the nurse and I was just like look I need to pee really bad maybe that's why like my muscles aren't relaxed because I'm trying to like hold this in like I need help going to the bathroom and just nobody would come back nobody came back to help me go to the bathroom and so finally I was just like look great I need to get up and go to the bathroom and then when I started trying to do that myself a nurse came by and, and decided to help me I guess and I was just like I just need to go to the bathroom so my muscles can relax just so I can feed my baby because I feel so bad for her and Gray was like keeping her calm and like singing to her and everything but I just knew she was starving and she didn't know what was going on. I just felt so bad for her. I did feel a lot better after I went to the bathroom, but I was still in so much pain. And so then I'm just sitting there on the stretcher in the emergency room feeding my baby because all the medications they had given me were safe for breastfeeding, which was good. And then they were just like, all right, we're ready to discharge. And I was just like, what? They're like, yeah, like you can go home now. In my mind, I was just like, Look, I hate hospitals and I am the first to say that I want to go home, but I have never been in this much pain except when I was in labor and when I was in labor there was a reason for it and now it doesn't feel like there's a reason for it. And they were like, yeah, well, we probably would have sent you for an MRI, but our MRI department left at 7 and it was like 9 o'clock. The doctor told us, come get an MRI as soon as you can and I was, we were like, okay. So we went home and it was so hard to get up the stairs, but I made myself go all the way up the stairs. This was Saturday, so Sunday went by and Monday morning we called and we were like, hey, can we get an MRI? And they were like, there hasn't been an order for an MRI. And we were just like, oh my gosh, this doctor told us to go ASAP and I'm in so, so much pain. I can't even go to the bathroom. My husband got me a little bottle, like urinal thingy to pee in because I could only like get out of bed and I couldn't sit on the toilet like it was just not possible and they were just like well we need we can't do an MRI without an order and we were like yeah fair I don't know why the doctor didn't order one so then we called my primary care doctor and we were like hey can you order that MRI that you wanted to order that one time and he was just like well I want to see you come in first before we order the MRI and we were like fine and so he's like you can come in on Tuesday and I was like Oh my gosh it's another whole day where I'm not getting an MRI so I went in on Tuesday and he was like yeah you look really bad because I was in a wheelchair because I couldn't stand like I actually could not stand by myself I had to hold on to gray to be able to get to the car I did a lot of crawling on all fours it was not possible for me to stand by myself and so when 
I would get out of the car, I'd get into a wheelchair and the wheelchair was so uncomfortable for me to sit in, I would be holding myself up with my arms and trying to keep my back straight and I had to use my arms to hold my back up because I couldn't sit. He was like, yeah, let's get an MRI. And he was like, hey, look, they have an opening right now if you go right now. He's like, that doesn't usually happen. So it's really good. And we sent the order over to them so they can give you the MRI. And I was like, great. So we went over and we did the MRI. And it was just like a back MRI without contrast. And it was over. And then we went home. And then my doctor called me at like 5 p.m. And whenever your doctor calls you after hours, you know that it's not going to be great news. Um, so he called me and he was like, hey, like, unfortunately, I don't really have great news. It looks like your L2 vertebrae is fractured. And what we suspect is that there is metastatic breast cancer in the bone that ended up crushing it. You're, it this was not fractured in do, June when you had that x-ray. So you probably just did this. And I was like, looking at the picture of the MRI he texted me, I was like, oh my gosh, that looks super painful. That makes sense because I am in that much pain right now. He said, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna send you for an MRI with contrast with, of your chest, abdomen, and pelvis, and a CT scan of that kind of area too. And they're called different things, but basically whole area, they wanted CT and MRI. And so that took forever. I was in the MRI for like two and a half hours or something, or I was in the MRI for two hours and then um, the CT scan was really short, like CT scans are. Um, and then after that, I had this orthopedic surgeon guy call me and he said, it looks like you've got tons of lesions throughout your spine and pelvis. And I was like, oh, okay, like how many lesions? And he was like, too many to count. I was like, okay, great. And he was like, yeah, and like this one is the one that like fractured your vertebrae. Throughout this entire process, we were texting my old oncologist back in Virginia because I never got a new oncologist while I was here because we knew we were moving back to Virginia. So um, my, my oncologist from Virginia is just texting us and he's like, keep me in the loop, keep me in the loop. And he gets in touch with one of his friends who knew a, a neurosurgeon near us and he talked to that neurosurgeon. That neurosurgeon woke up at like four in the morning our time to talk to him. And he was like, you need to get the surgery, this surgery from this neurosurgeon because we trust her and whatever. So we went to this appointment with this neurosurgeon and she told us about the surgery where she can stabilize the spine by like, she inserts these um, screws into the other vertebrae and then the rods to connect it that can kind of like try to straighten out uh, the spine. I don't <laughs> I don't know if that was a really good description or not, but anyway, the surgery is supposed to be super painful. Like the recovery from the surgery is super painful, but I was already in so much pain that it didn't really matter. Um, but my pain was getting better because I was on like a ton of like anti-inflammatory uh, medicines and stuff. And I was getting used to how I had to walk around. I still couldn't walk around by myself. I was still like needing a person, but um, I was getting used to it. Then I needed to do a, another CT scan because they need a special CT scan to do the surgery, right? And they need that CT scan or else they can't do the surgery. I also needed to go all the way back into Anchorage to get my blood drawn because they told me that I needed to get the blood drawn at that hospital. For some reason, like there was some test that they had to do it at that hospital and I couldn't do it where we live. And Anchorage is about an hour from where we live and that's where the neurosurgeon's office was too. And it was, you know, super painful to drive in the car and everything and I hated it, but we had to do that. So I had to get my blood drawn there so they could do the surgery and make sure like my levels of everything were fine or whatever. And yeah, I got the CT scan and then on Sunday I was just like, I'm doing nothing today. I'm just laying in bed and I'm doing absolutely nothing today. And that's what I did. Uh, waited for my surgery on Monday morning. I had to get there at 5.30 a.m. We actually managed to give me a shower because I had to shower with antibacterial soap. And the way that we did it was we got a blow up pool because we don't, we don't have a walk-in shower. If we had a walk-in shower, this would have been easier, but we had like a bathtub shower thing. And I couldn't like get over the ledge to get in the bathtub. And once I was in there, there was nothing to hold on to that would be safe enough for me to shower like that. So what we did was we got a blow up pool and we pushed it into the bathroom and I held my head over the shower, over the bathtub to um, wash my hair. But then like the rest of my body, we took the shower head off and rinsed 
like into that little blow up pool. Oh, and I forgot to mention my parents um, had come up earlier that week to help because Gray was taking care of me and the baby and it was a lot and I was gonna have surgery and um, somebody needed to watch the baby because I was gonna be in the hospital for up to three days. And that was like a whole other stress on me because she's breastfed and they were gonna be giving me all this stuff where I can't breastfeed and she's never taken formula. So that was a whole other thing that I was worried about and she's never been, she's never had a night without me. And so honestly, that was the main thing that I was worried about. But you know, had the surgery, I'm not gonna go into all the details of the surgery. That's like a whole other video. But I had the surgery and recovery has been going really well. It's been really painful, but it's been going really well. And now my spine feels a lot more stabilized. I can actually get up and walk by myself. I have a walker um, that I use a lot. You can see it back there, I think. Um, it helps me sit, sit down and stuff. Um, I was mainly dependent on that before. Now I'm starting to not use it as much. But um, yeah, so that has helped me a lot. And I feel like I can do way more things than I could before surgery. It's just all the pain and like actually when I looked up this surgery on the internet it said it was like one of the most painful surgeries you can have so that's fun um the recovery has been hard but you know home now um I'm filming this on August 29th so it's been over a week since my surgery and we are planning on trying to get back to Virginia as soon as possible to be with my oncology team there to discuss further steps on how to treat the cancer. We were just focusing on the short term of getting my back fixed so I was able to travel. Um, and now we are gonna be focusing more on the cancer and long-term plan with that. And honestly, I do not have really any details on that other than they're thinking I might need radiation on the spine. So, Sorry I don't have more details on that. Obviously I'll make more videos. Basically this video is just to inform you. Yeah, I, my cancer is back and it's unfortunate and it's sad and, but I'm doing fine. Uh, obviously Gray is a little bit worse than me because your family is obviously gonna worry more about you than you worry about yourself. Just like I've said many times before. Um, I know I'll be fine and everything will be okay. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on. I'm really tired of sitting now, but I was able to do it long enough to film this video, so hope that's good for you guys, and I'm um, sorry that I have been just not posting, but obviously now you know why. Thanks so much for watching, and subscribe if you want to follow along with my journey, and yeah, that's all. Bye!